And welcome to episode five of How to Be Unscammable. If you're new to this series, this show is designed to help older adults learn how to secure their digital lives. Over 10 episodes, you can follow simple steps to secure your personal data, online accounts, and devices. In this episode, I'll show you how to make sure your email accounts are unscammable. Hi there, everyone. My name is Linda Fawkes, and I'm the founder of Glue Society, a Canadian nonprofit that's helped thousands of older adults secure their digital lives. It's important we all learn the easy steps to secure our digital lives so we can use the technology that's promising to keep us happy, healthy, and connected. Before you dive into this episode, it's smart to check if your email address has been seen on the dark web. Here's the website you can use to find out. Now make sure you check every email address you have, and this is what we covered in episode three. It's worth taking a look at that episode to ensure that you know about the dark web. If your email address has been seen on the dark web, then you should stop using that email address and follow the steps in this episode. Because no matter how you prefer to communicate, email forms a big part of our digital lives. An email address is often used to reset passwords and control access to your online accounts. We also have a lot of private information stored in our inboxes that would be a gold mine to cyber criminals. Now, some of you might be thinking, ah, it's just my email address and loads of people already know it. Why should I worry? Well, it's actually a big deal for many reasons, and here are a few of the top ones. Hackers can break into your other online accounts if they have access to your email account, especially if you're using weak or reused passwords. See episode four to learn how to make sure your passwords are unscammable. Hackers can steal the sensitive information that's stored in your emails. And hackers can spoof your email account, tricking others into thinking they're receiving messages from you. So the bottom line is that you don't want cyber criminals in your inbox. And here are the steps to keep them out. Consider this. If you're only using one email address, then a breach of your email account could mean hackers have access to your entire digital life. But there's a way to prevent this from happening and that is to use separate email addresses for the different areas of your digital life. I call these email silos, and here's how they work. You would use one email address with family and friends and another email address for, let's say, online banking. Using email silos means that a breach of your family and friends email address, for instance, means your bank account won't be affected. How many email addresses are right for you will take some thought, but using a different email address for the various areas of your digital life is a huge step to keeping your email addresses unscammable. Here are a few ideas on using email silos to protect your digital life. Consider three different email addresses for the following areas of your digital life. Email address number one could be for online accounts such as banking, shopping, government services, etc. An email address number two could be for friends, family, social media, and pretty much everything else. An email address number three could be your throwaway email address that you use for random signups, apps, and discounts. I'm going to talk more about this in a second. Now, if you're more active online, consider separating your financial accounts from your online shopping accounts. And here's what that might look like. An email address, number one, let's say, is for bank accounts, mortgage accounts, investment accounts, things like that. Email address number two could be for online shopping and any accounts that have your credit card. Email address number three would be for family and friends. Number four would be for social media and news websites and things of that nature. And then email address number five is your throwaway email address for random signups, apps, and discounts. 
Now, there's no right or wrong here, but consider using multiple email addresses to protect yourself. It's going to keep your data safer and make it easier to transition to a new email address the next time your data is found on the dark web. Because that's a when, not an if in today's world. Now, don't worry about keeping all these email addresses organized. You're going to be able to see them in one combined inbox if you want to, probably using exactly the same email app you're using right now. If you're a Gmail user, that might be the Gmail app. And if you're an Apple user, that might be the Apple Mail app. But all major mail apps let you view multiple email addresses. It's as easy as adding your email address and the password you use to create that address to your mail app. Try a Google search to learn how to do this for the email app that you are using. Step one in this episode is to decide how many new email addresses you want and figure out what part of your digital life they will be dedicated to. You can start small and add email addresses once you get the hang of managing more than one email. The online account tracker can help you do this. I've added a link to that in the show notes at the end of this episode. I like to create a throwaway email address for using on newsletters, online accounts, and interesting things I find online, as well as to take advantage of discounts. You know those ones where you get 10% off if you sign up right now. At that moment, I use my throwaway email address, since I would never want to give these websites or companies the same email address that I'm using for my bank account, or for any account with my personally identifiable information. Think about setting up a throwaway email address for your digital life. If your current email address gets lots of spam, then getting a new email address is a good idea. And if your current email address has been seen on the dark web, then getting a new email address is critical. Before you get started, here's a few tips on how to choose a new email address because step two in this episode is to get your new email address to keep your email accounts unscammable. But you need these tips before you start, because it's tempting to try to get an email address that contains your name, but you definitely want to avoid that. Using an email address that contains your name can make it easier for cyber criminals to tie that email to you personally. However unlikely that might sound, it's totally a possibility, and why bother taking the risk? So when creating a new email address, think random and don't be shy of using numbers. And it's good to remember that once you give someone your email address, they typically only enter it once and they never have to type it in again because their device should remember it. So where do you get these new email addresses from? I can hear someone asking me that right now. Well, you've got a few solid options. Gmail, Microsoft, Outlook, and Apple iCloud are popular and secure choices. And if you have an internet connection at home, the company that's providing that internet connection can usually provide you with email addresses. Now, the downside of this approach is that if you switch to a new internet service provider, you may have to change your email address. That's something to think about. Now, limit the amount of personally identifiable information, or PII, you provide when setting up a new email address. Does that new email account really need your real birth date? Do they need your physical address? Try to get in the habit of creating anonymous accounts or close to it, so it's less likely that cyber criminals can identify you if they access this information. We've included some learning resources in the show notes to help you determine how to get a new email address using the leading email service providers. And if you get an email address through your local internet service provider, contact them for help on this. Now, it wouldn't be an episode of How to Be Unscammable without me reminding you about your passwords. Whether you stick with one email account or decide to use multiple emails, it's vital to protect each account with a unique, randomly generated password. Reusing the same password on multiple accounts is a major vulnerability, but You already know that because you've seen the passwords episode. Step three, 
Beware of phishing emails. You need to understand what these are. And if you're not familiar with this term, a phishing email is an email that looks like it's from a reputable company, but it's from a cyber criminal who could be trying to put malware, viruses, or something else onto your device and trick you into providing your personal information. This is exactly how malware and viruses get onto our devices, and it's also a proven way to trick us into giving up our sensitive information. According to a survey, nearly 80% of people can't tell a phishing email from a legitimate email, and that is a big problem because 95% of malware gets onto our devices through phishing emails. So how do you spot a phishing email? That's a tough one. We can get into a lot of detail here about how to tell the difference between a phishing email from a legitimate email, but that's probably not going to help. Any system or tips we think of today to spot phishing emails could be useless tomorrow. And that's because cyber criminals get better every day at creating phishing emails, making it almost impossible for us to tell the difference. So step three in this episode is to learn the foolproof system for avoiding phishing emails. And here it is. It's pretty simple. Don't use any information in an email to contact the sender. If this is a company you're doing business with and you need to reply to them, look up the email address on your own or call them. Never reply to an email and never click on links in any email unless you are 200% sure the sender is legitimate. And that's it. Those are the two steps you need to know to keep you safe from phishing emails. It's okay to look at suspicious emails, just don't click. And, and use this as a nudge to contact that person or company, always starting with a clean email, using an email address that you have verified. So how do you get your messages from your old inbox to your new inbox? That is an excellent question. Start by going through your current inbox and find all the important emails you want to move to your new inbox. When you find one, forward it to your new email address. And if you're not sure how to forward an email, try a Google search to help you locate the icon. And step four is to go through your inbox, your old inbox, and forward any messages you want to keep to your new email address. Now using the search feature in your mail app can make this quick and you can scan through your inbox using search terms like try searching for the name of your bank or the other companies you have online accounts with. And here are a few other search phrases that can help you unearth accounts and newsletter subscriptions. Welcome, new account, confirm email, you get the idea. I'm going to put a list of these search phrases as a link in the show notes you can get at the end of the episode. Now it's possible to forward your whole inbox in one go, but that's not a beginner move. If you have a techie friend, they might be able to help you do this. For the rest of us, we're just going to have to be patient and sort through our messages pretty much one by one. Search is your friend on this. There are companies just a Google search away that promise to do all of this heavy lifting for you. They offer to go through your inbox to unsubscribe you from newsletters and move important emails to your new account. I don't recommend using these services unless you are 200% sure of the people on the other end. Your email account is one of your most sensitive online accounts and giving anyone access to it comes with significant risks. Please be careful. This next step is to update your online accounts with your new email address. This means going to each online account, logging in and changing your account settings. If you can't easily find out how to do this, try a Google search or contact their customer support department for help. And while you're in your online account, here's a nudge to update your passwords. Using a password manager will make this step much easier. If you're going to create your own passwords, consider checking out episode four before you begin. You want to do this the correct way, using a unique randomly generated password on each account. Now for email newsletters, the process of updating your email address might be a bit different. Most people head to over to the newsletter sign up page and just add their new email address. 
That's often way easier than taking your old email address off their list. And it won't matter anyway, because at some point you're going to be deleting your old email address. Once you have your new email up and running, it's time to start telling people what your new email address is. So this step is to draft the email you're going to send to everyone, letting them know that you have a new email address. Make sure your message asks them to remove your old email address from their address book or contact list. Here's an example of what that message could look like. I like to keep this text handy where I can copy and paste it when I need it, let's say in a note or even in a draft email. If you're not sure how to copy and paste on your device, try a quick Google search. This is a super handy skill to have, and it definitely saves some typing, which is always very helpful. If you don't have that many contacts, you could do this step one by one, one email at a time, or you could create an email to all of your contacts at once. Just make sure to add everyone's email address to the BCC line in that email to protect their privacy. And here's a security tip. You don't want to add your new email address to your email signature, as that will alert cyber criminals who are emailing you of your new email address, and we want to keep that away from them for as long as we can. Plan on keeping your old email address for as long as a year after you begin this process. This gives you and everyone else time to adjust, but you can keep it for as long as you like. Another good reason to keep your old email address for a while is if you need help resetting any account passwords. If you forgot a password for an online account that's using your old email address, you're going to have to reset it, and those password reset emails will be sent to your old email address. Pop into your old inbox from time to time and see what messages are still coming in, and get in the habit of forwarding those right away to your new email address and then logging into those accounts to update your email address. And then when you're ready, this step is a reminder to properly delete your old email address account. It's totally fine to keep the account active until you're confident the time is right to delete it, but it's crucial during the transition phase that you don't send emails from your old email address. At least try to limit that. And it's really important that you actually delete this account when you're done. So check the steps to properly remove your old account. It's important you don't just leave this account hanging. Delete it properly. We've included instructions in the show notes that explain how to delete email accounts on Gmail, Outlook, and iCloud. And those are the basics of making your email unscammable. Let's recap the steps. Create email silos. This is a clever way to organize your emails so that if one of your email addresses makes its way onto the dark web, none of your other accounts are threatened. Get a new email address. You may even want to get more than one new email address. You can use any of the main email providers to give you a secure email account. Or check with your internet service provider to see if they can give you an email account. Beware of phishing emails. The easiest way to avoid them is to get in the habit of never clicking on or using any information contained in an email. Verify the contact details yourself if you have to reply to the sender. Move messages to your new email address. This can take some time and some patience. For those with access to that techie friend, you could talk through the process with them. And if you don't have a techie friend, just go email by email. Update accounts with your new email address and change some passwords while you're there. You'll do this process differently for email newsletters, but the idea is to identify where you need to change your email address and then decide the best way to do that using the information I've provided here. Let your people know your new email address and ask them to remove your old email address from their contact lists. Close your old email account. And when the time is right, properly delete that old email account. It's hard to know how long this process will take. You can keep your old email address as long as you like, but delete it when you're done. A 
Avoid sending sensitive information over email. When you send a message, you no longer have control over who can see it. So be in the habit of only sharing sensitive information over the phone or through secure messaging apps. Never click on the unsubscribe link in spam emails. You don't want to click on these links. Definitely not. That might feel like it's the right way to get rid of these messages, but it's probably a trap. There's a real chance you'll be redirected to a phishing website that will try to steal your personal information. If a spam email does end up in your inbox, the best way to deal with it is to report it as spam or move it to your junk folder. Google how to do this for your email app. And that's it. Securing your email address can be a time-consuming process, but it's an important one. If you use email silos, this process will be much easier the next time you have to change an email address. So here's the link and the QR code to the show notes where you can get a transcript of this episode and the links to some of the resources I discussed, plus a few bonus items. And next time we talk about social hacking, the human side of cybercrime, and I give you some proven tips to protect yourself. And in episode seven, you'll learn the steps to protect your identity online and offline. We'll see you in episode six. Thank you.